bottom boat for hauling cargo. I used to build these things for the Navy in the Great War. They couldn't have landed on the continent without it. Let me show you. Let's see. It's modular, see? You connect as many sub hauls as you need, depending upon the application. And the uh -huh. beauty is, if you don't mind to, you could land shipments on the shore of the Sanitary Canal, way out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm talking big tonnage, too. Wait until Alice Frankie. sees this. Well, am I going to have to wait much longer? Excuse me, Frankie, What's... you got to come quick. What's the problem? I'm talking. The cops are towing the car. The cops? Who the hell they think they are? I'll be right back. No excuses. It's got to be by today. Excuse me. You wouldn't happen to have a phone I could use around here, would you? A private one? Our phones are strictly for business. And well, that's what this call is, strictly business. Hey, I'm a good guy. It's Frankie Rio about me. My name's Ned Truman. And you are? Belinda Rebello. Oh, Belinda. Now that we're old friends and everything, uh, I bet I could use that one right there. You're not going to take no for an answer. Well, now you already know the answer to that one, don't you? Don't blame me if you get in trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. Come see you. Look at Kenneth. We need half now. How did you like with your hair? Well, I really wanted to see you, so I came straight in from Detroit. Yesterday you said Toronto. I did. What the hell? What do you do? What the hell are you doing? What, feds me possessing cars now? Just your car, Frankie. And you along with it, I'm afraid. Seems like you have some outstanding traffic violations. You're kidding me, right? Take them away, boys. Ain't life grand. Home and you're in sorrow. Let us take you by the hand. Ethel, Come on, Becky. You can see me tonight. Just climb out your window. Your dad'll never know. What do I stutter? I said a grand on Red's Darling in the fifth. Who the hell is that? Uh, some friend of Rio's. Tell him make it fast. What do you mean the check's in the mail? You said that last month and the month before. We're gonna have to take the ice. Just a minute, Jimmy. She's getting heavy, you know. Okay, here she is. My little pumpkin. It's Daddy. You recognize Daddy's boy? business I'd like to do at fairgrounds. Best judge I ever saw. Even better than Earl Sand. Hell, I'd put a grand on him if he was carrying the horse. <laughs> Did you see him in the six last week? Yeah. Could have made a killing. All right, all right. Look, put another grand across the board of Baker Jr. That's a smart setup, Mike. Right in your opponent's backyard, huh? Yeah. You'll never know what to do. Great job, Steelman. Let's get it wired up. Right, boss. Now the fun begins. God willing, Capone will never stop talking on that telephone. Amen to that. Yeah, 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 Guido, quit complaining. I'm starting to think you don't want your trucks to make this delivery. It ain't that, Mr. Diddy. It's just the warehouse is going to be hard to find. Well, it's supposed to be hard to find. Now, look, this is what you do. I want you to take Stoney to 75th. All right, then you make a right. Oh, right there. Sammy, it's Frank. 500 cases of scotch, 4375 West Sangamon, 8 o'clock tonight.
everybody out. Clear the room. Hasta. Yeah, Frank, stay. What the hell was that all about? Son of a bitch, and that's his biting his heart, Frank. It's like we don't have any secrets anymore, and I want to know why. Look, I've been looking for a leak. I can't find anything. Yeah, well, something's been bothering me. I couldn't sleep last night thinking about it. When's the last time you used this phone? About 20, 25 minutes ago. Did you hear clicking? And when did you start hearing it? About a week, week and a half. Sounds like somebody's tap dancing on a line. How long has Ness been putting it to us? It's got to be the phone. You're damn right, it's the phones. This son of a bitch Ness has been listening every word we say. All right, I'll get our guy at the phone company. I'll tell him to clear the line. You tell him nothing. This is what we do from now on, right? We got business to do. We send the runner down the Marshall Fields, make the calls there. We use a different phone for every piece of business. What are we going to do with this phone here? What do you think I'm going to do, Frank? Huh? I'm going to have some fun with these guys. Gino. Yeah. The address is 1825 Milwaukee Avenue. Here's the back entrance. Yeah, 800 West Devon. Now it's important, Eddie. I don't want any screw ups, all right? I want you to go down to Marshall Fields. Now you make sure you don't talk to anybody but Norm Kilgore. And then when you're done with that, come back here. I got something else for you. Capish? Yes, sir. All right, get out of here. <laughs> well, what's so funny? <laughs> I was just wondering when this guy Ness is gonna go out of his friggin' mind. God help me, Frank. There's a part of me that just loves screwing with these feds. <laughs> Bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the message in this case is pretty clear. Capone's figured out we've been tapping. He certainly has been making quite a fool out of us. Just wish I knew how. I'd like to know that too. Right now it's more important to shut down the tap, get you back on the street where you can do some good. If you say so. Only question now is where do we go from here? I got into the Lexington once, I can do it again. After all the raids you've been on, I think not. Wait. Every one of the men that we arrested in those raids is in jail. Frankie Rio is free. Frankie Rio, who I sold on my flat-bottom boat. Yeah, but you disappeared the day the tap was installed. The big boys in Cleveland wanted him back. We've already established that cover. Wait a minute. What if there's a hole in that cover? We didn't set the cover up for this. Now, a man's life is at stake here. Are you thinking about that? Are you thinking about the headlines? You're on a line, Mike. We got Robbins back undercover. And if he's able to get close to Rio, we've got a shot at one of Capone's chief lieutenants. This is madness. Look, they are going to find him out. And when they do, my friend, Greasy Al is going to pluck each of your eyeballs out and eat them in front of you. Well, that's the chance I'm willing to take. It's OK with you. It is. So what gives, Ness? I mean, one day it's like you're running for office, and the next day you're so hard to track down, you might as well be on the land. I'm going to work. Work's not easy when you're trying to put Al Capone out of business. Yeah, you're certainly making it look easy for a while. Things change. Come on, my readers want to know more than that. Tell them to get it from somebody else. All right, all right, all right. What about me? How about if we just keep it between the two of us? I'm afraid you're not in the business of keeping secrets. And I suppose you need to use the phone again, too. Actually, I was looking for Frankie Real. He's in with Mr. Capone right now. So, I'll wait. And uh, you can tell me a little bit about yourself. Belinda, right? So what is it you do around here, Belinda? I'm a secretary for Mr. Capone. An executive secretary, really. Huh. You must have had to go to college for that, huh? Oh, only two years down at Champagne is all. And then my ma got sick, and I had to come back and take care of her and my two kid sisters. And I, and I got an uncle that works for Mr. Capone. And you know how one thing leads to another. 
talk about that. Hey, look what the cat dragged in. How you doing, Ed? Hey, Frankie, sorry I couldn't hang around longer last time. I had to take care of some business. Oh, that's right. right. This is the guy I kept telling you about. You know, the one who used to be in the Navy? He moved all his stuff across the English Channel. Good to meet you, Al. Truman, this is Al Capone. Take care of what I told you to take care of, Frankie. Don't worry, Al. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Who is this guy, Frank? Have him checked out. I don't know, Frank. You know, every time I look around here, I think I ought to get my butt back to Cleveland when things are wide open. Don't get nervous. There's nobody in this world that's smarter than Al Capone. i got a bigger heart. You ain't gonna lose Chicago. Yeah, well, that's not what I've been reading in the papers. The papers? <laughs> what the hell do the papers know? You can read them all you want. You're never gonna find out about the ship we got coming in tomorrow night. And the feds? Ain't gonna lay a finger on them. You using boats? Trucks. The trucks are out of my league. We use your boats, don't worry. But trucks are the only thing that'll get us where we wanna go on this hop. Someplace special, huh? Tannery. Hey. Yeah, 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 sorry. It's our biggest shipment yet. We're digging into the Thompson tannery. Ain't that something? Who's in the tannery? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, go. Thank you. What's happening? We're being betrayed from within. I want this Judas found, Frank. Okay. He's part of the organization. I'll find him. It's just going to take some time, that's all. Hundreds of the people on the payroll to check out. Look, I'm not in the mood to wait. I want to look every man in the eye that works for me right now. <laughs> Get rid of it, Joey. What kind of a man do you think will take advantage of my kindness and then betray me? Of all the questions I face every day, this is the one that troubles me the most. I mean, I lay awake at night thinking about which one of my people will betray my loyalty. Could it be you, Joey Bax? I mean, you're the only one that got away from the brewery on Halstead. I'm loyal, I swear to Mr. Capone. Then whose face does my traitor have, huh? How about you, Rocco? You turn right on me? No, never, Mr. Capone. Never. What about you? Well, well, yeah, yeah, sorry, well, yeah. Hey, Frank, you know. I'm Frankie Rio's friend, huh? Yeah, Ned, Ned, Ned Truman. Yeah, Ned. Yeah, Ned. Hey, Ned. You know this guy, Elian Ness? No. I never met him. Well, he's a real bonehead. Only you wouldn't know that, would you? I mean, you're from, uh... Cleveland. Know. Yeah, Cleveland, that's right. You lying to me? No. Hey, what do you know? Cleveland. Who is it? Who's my Judas? 
You can hide. But I'm gonna find you. something in there, Belinda? No, no, I... I just want to see if you're all right. It's pretty frightening. That? I've been through worse. Taxi! You're right. I forgot. You're a tough guy. Well, for what it's worth, I was worried for you. You shouldn't have been. Yeah. Look. I appreciate it. Lover boy, Al wants to see you. Guess I better go. See you later. I hope so. That's right. You did pretty good in that, Cleveland. You held your water. Well, you didn't hear my knees knocking. I wasn't looking at your knees. I was looking at your eyes. They told me that you weren't afraid. You got stones. So I was thinking that maybe you and me, we could do some business together. Well, what do you got in mind? Those boats of yours. Are they as good as you told Frankie Rio they were? They're better. Yeah, well, I'm gonna need a little more than hot air on this, Cleveland. You promise Al Capone something. You better be able to deliver. Would you let me go back to my place? I'll pick up the blueprints and maybe a little more information will meet you back uh, later tonight. Pull over. Come around the hotel tomorrow night. We'll talk nuts and bolts. You better be on the level on this, Cleveland. Uh, don't worry, I, I'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs> it's a funny thing about parents, how they teach you things. Through the years, without you realizing it, you know, until much later. That's what it was like with my mother. My dad died when, when I was nine. Oh, I'm sorry. My mother had to raise those kids all by herself. So, so then when she got sick, I... Uh... It was time for you to sacrifice for her. Yeah, it was. Teasing me. I'm serious. I never had a date in high school. I bet you had all kinds of girls after you. <laughs> well, it didn't matter anyway, because I never knew how to dance. <laughs> you did? Nope. Do you now? Sure. Let me show you. <laughs> you know, sometimes if I can just get out here away from the madness of the city, I feel better. You know what I do when things get crazy? What? Go up on the roof. <laughs> the roof? Yeah. I, even in the middle of winter, I go up there and I sit down and I look out over everything. And no matter how crazy I am inside, I settle down, you know? <laughs> Find a perspective. You're not like those other guys. You have softness still inside of you. <laughs> they act so tough all the time. And that's what they become. And they don't feel anything inside themselves. They don't feel anything about anybody else. I hate it there. Sleep with me. I just pounding. So is mine. Sleep with me. You're not nervous, are you? No. You're beautiful. Please don't. 
don't lie to me. I hear so many lies at work every day. Oh, I'm not lying. Honest. That's the most important thing. Honest. Honesty. Chicago is sobering up to the daring goo of that untouchable Prohibition agent Elliot Ness. And it's over for one bootlegger, hungover that is. For Do Alabama, I always look that bad? Fine. And Pay attention. Ness on the job. Capone's private reserves have been falling under Ness's watchful eye and axe recently, shutting down more than a dozen operations in the past two weeks. Ness, the headline-grabbing leader of the Untouchables, so named because of their incorruptibility, says that the battle against Capone has just begun. Further vowing to put Scarface in any other movie. <laughs> well, I was wondering if the beautiful girl I'm with would let her fellow buy her a Sunday. Oh, you mean my famous fellow? Please don't say that, Cam. Oh, hey, look around. I just want to thank you for everything you're doing. I appreciate that. Yeah, we need someone like you to make the streets safe for Godfrey people. See, I told you you were famous. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Ness! For the snitch, Al. We're looking real hard. I don't want any screw ups like what happened at the Thompson Tannery. Frank, have everything sent over to Cicero. We got more protection in the warehouse there. Mr. Capone, there's something I need to talk to you about. Linda, come in. What's the matter? You look worried. Robin says his cover is safe. The man is getting results. I think the benefit of having him there outweighs the risks. How many gallons of bootleg whiskey is a good man's life worth? I'm begging you, Elliot. Get him out of there. You're right. Get him out tonight. See what happened? 
happens when you worry about every penny? <laughs> Get your head out of the clouds, man. If Robbins hasn't shown by He's now... He's living on Capone's schedule, not ours. We'll give him another half an hour. And if he doesn't show... We go to his boarding house. Who the hell are you? We've been through this already! If you don't want to talk to Frankie Rio, talk to Sam Goldberg in Cleveland. He'll tell you. Uh-huh, Pally. The Fed's got Sammy Goldberg on a leash for the last three weeks. Who careless, Frank? Somebody in. This punk ought to be dead until he spills his guts. Something stinks about this guy. I want to see how big a hook the feds have in him. Who's here with you? I'm the one asking questions. Now tell me who Paul Robbins is. I never heard of him. Don't lie to me, punk. Who is Paul Robbins? I don't know. Liar! Robbins is a dead man. Mike? Jesus, Frankie, what are you trying to do to me here? Al, come on, Al. You don't have to say anything. The hell I don't. Now, you let somebody into our inner circle because of your carelessness. Now, who did he talk to and what does he know? I don't know. I never thought. I mean, you know how it is. We're out there with a thousand different people every day. And this guy, he had a boat, and he had the blueprints. He had you by the nose. That's what he had. I'm sorry, Al. I'm sorry. I was told he was all right. But he conned me. I got no excuse. He played me for a sucker. If it was anybody else but you, I'd have him killed. I'm very disappointed in you, Frankie. What kind of business am I running here? Another one. Bad enough. You're right. We have had a lot. Where's the hat, Guinea? You don't talk that way around here, Mick. I talk any way I want. I said. Where's the head guinea? Hey, he's right here. What's your problem, big boy? Huh? I'm looking for a friend of mine. Friend? <laughs> How would I know about your friends, huh? Assuming that you got any. Sloppy way that you carry yourself. What's your name? My name is Malone. Malone. <laughs> Malone, the busted out make Flatfoot. Huh? I heard that you were running errands for Elliot Ness. But you don't look like you're in any shape to do any running right now. The man I'm looking for is called Paul Robbins. You know him better as Ned Truman. Has he got two names? He can't make up his mind who he is? And what is he, some rummy friend of yours? He's a fed Capone. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and you've kidnapped him. Kidnapped him? Very kidnap is not my style. Oh, yes, it is. And well, it's perfect for a backstabbing, poor box robbing, rot gut peddling dago pimp. Son of a bitch. Hey, hey, hey. Take it easy. I like hearing them talk, you know? So many nasty little adjectives. It's amazing what a little whiskey will do for the vocabulary of a drunken, blowhard Irishman. I want you to understand something, Capone. If you kill a fed, you're going to think the Marines had landed on your doorstep. The Marines and every other person that the government of this country can issue a badge to. And they're not going to be content with just trampling you underfoot. When they've finished squashing you, they're going to turn their attention to all your other heathen brethren in Philadelphia and New York and every other city where they plague society. So you better get on the phone and Talk to your little pals like Lucky Luciano, Tony Arcado, and Meyer Lansky, and tell them exactly what is in store for them if you persist in being stupid. Now I'm going to step outside and get some fresh air. The stink in here is making me sick. 
Yeah, why don't you do that, huh? Why don't you stumble your way home, you drunk bastard? Get this punk out to the gun club. I just went to see Capone. I walked right up to the little monkey, and I told him that Robbins was one of ours, and I wanted him back. Mike, you're a mess. And you're not thinking clearly. Now he knows that Robbins is a fed. Capone won't knowingly kill a fed, not yet. He doesn't want the trouble it'll bring down on him. You're gambling. What the hell do you think you've been doing with Robbins' life? For a few measly headlines. Yeah. Yeah, he's here. Hold on. It's for you. Mike Malone. Yeah? Listen, can you stay where you are? Right. I'll be with you in 20 minutes. I will be bringing somebody. Yes? Yes, you can trust him. Someone we should meet. Frankie, the guy's a fed, all right? Now, we don't start making some moves. Am I wrong, Frank? Somebody's gonna have to do a stretch here. How could we know the guy was a fed? Not we, Frank. You. You let the guy get close to you. And that is gonna be a kidnapping rap. I need you to get out of town. Are you serious? Look, Frank, I love you like a brother. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, and you know it. So I don't want him nailing you on some kidnapping. I want you to take a little trip. Go down to Florida. Better yet, Cuba. We'll give you a call when the heat dies down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This will take you to trip. I'm sorry, Al. Joey Bags take the Fed. Told him not to tell us. That was for you. I want to keep you as far away from this hit as possible. Yeah, you've done the right thing, Frank. But I want you to get a hold of Joey Bags. I don't want him killing this guy. I don't want things to be stirred up any worse than they are. You well, maybe he's still trying to squeeze information out of him. I hope so. I don't mind this guy takes a few lumps, but I don't want him dead, Frank. All right? I need you to clean this up for me. All right, I'll find him. I'm sorry, Frank. I ain't seen Joey since yesterday. Who has? There's a guy. He took Joey in as a kid. He runs a speak over on Blackstone. Sam Vitucci? Yeah, it is him. Elliot Ness. I read about you in the newspapers. Father, uh, do you mind if we speak to Belinda by herself, please? Oh. Am I under arrest? No. Father told us over the phone that you wanted to talk. We're here to listen. I'm not a bad person. I want you to know that. And Ned, he just made me feel pretty. No man ever did anything like that for me before. And then I... You couldn't have betrayed him any more than I did. What do you mean? 
I don't have time to explain. Just help me keep things from getting any worse. I don't know if we can. He looked so terrible when, when the one they called Joey Bags and another man brought him out of the hotel this afternoon. Do you know where they took him? Please, Belinda. This is your chance to help save a good man's life. Joey Bags said something about a gun club. I know where that is. Will you be able to save Ned? I honestly don't know. What are you drinking? I ain't drinking, I'm looking. Joey Bags. We had some work to do for Al. He's out back at the gun club. You're a real tough guy. Oh. I'm talking, huh? Well, let me tell you, tough guys die too. He's a fed Capone. Uh. If you kill a fed. You're going to think the Marines have landed on your doorstep. The Marines and every other person that the government of this country can issue a badge to. I want you awake for this. Can you hear me? Get the eyes nice and wide so you can see me pull the trigger. That's it. That's a boy. I want to get it over with. Good idea. Bad idea. Don't even think about it. Drop the guns. Get your hands on your heads. I'll take that. Better you get over Move here. It. Come on. I want to get out of your life. Capone's way of saying it's all a dreadful mistake. They were good men, Al. I didn't want to kill him, but what choice did I have? You did the right thing, Frank. You didn't have a choice. I just feel bad about their families. Yeah, it was a terrible waste. Yeah, that's the business, though. In this business, they're always coming and going, like little Belinda. Now, she turned out to be a real disappointment. Well, now she's gone. And there'll be another one tomorrow. You know, sometimes this business, it just grinds me down, Frank. Well, you really feel like that? If it wasn't for you, I'd have to do everything myself. You'd have to kill me before I let you down. It's you and me, Frank. Two Brooklyn boys. There's no one else that we can trust. This is you and me. The best way to deal with this, Paul, is put it behind you. Forget about Belinda. Forget about what happened. It's not that easy. This is right. She betrayed you, and then she betrayed Capone. It's not so simple, Malone. She betrayed a man named Ned Truman, and when she figured out what she'd done, she tried to make up for him. She'll be safe. Somewhere where Capone can never find her. Yeah, well, it doesn't seem fair. We get our lives back, and she doesn't get hers. Fair's got nothing to do with it. We all made our mistakes. We all learned our lessons. Now we move on. 
If you're in the mood to say goodbye, you might try the bus station. Belinda! Wait. We, we have to talk. What happened between us was real. It would have happened, no matter how we met. Who's telling me that? Ned Truman or Paul Robbins? I'm telling you that. Paul Robbins. I'm confused right now. I never asked you for information. Look back. I never did. It wasn't like that with you and me. Goodbye, Paul. It was real nice while it lasted.